Welcome back. We are here at Classic Talk with Bing and Dennis. Today we have the pleasure of visiting with Paolo Schott. Well, we just uh, listened to you just sang. I mean, it's just so g glorious. Thank you. You know, if the song is good too, so that helps. <laughs> Now, um, when you sing opera and uh, sing Broadway, do you have to change your vocal cords or the voice? I try not to change my technique. But of course, I have to adapt to the style. Um, no matter what what kind of music I'm singing, I try to to keep uh, the essence of my voice, the color of my voice, and of course, the support and all the technical aspects that I learned and I think are the most uh, healthy um, helps for the technique, which is the, the of course the, the classical singing. But When I do, when I do South, when I did South Pacific, I had to adjust, of course, a little bit, not to sound too operatic, not to sound um, too broad. They, they wanted this man to sound different. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the the uh, the, the concept of uh, South Pacific was to have an opera singer. Edzo Pinza was their 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 stranger, you know, and um, and they wanted to keep like that. So I tried to keep my operatic voice, mm -hmm. but with a little hint of a more casual and song right. style. You must have been aware that, unlike in opera, you had a mic. Yes. So at times did you think, oh my God, I have to hold back because the mic is so close? No, I never never thought of holding back um, on the opposite. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that sometimes I could rely on the mics because after all, eight shows a week are a lot of shows and uh, we are not used to it opera singers because we give everything right at the performance and if you do that in a on an eight show week you know by the the last shows you're completely out of energy not just mm. the voice so i had to learn to to dose to 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 feel the what i could save in terms of energy and my voice and mm. uh, using the mics And uh, using their help, actually, and uh, they really helped on the days that I was not feeling well, and I was not able to. To I thought in an operatic stage I would I would not be able to perform, but still, with a mic I could. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's a very wise thing that it was introduced not long ago and uh, on Broadway because decades ago ago the singers would still sing without mics. But still, the, the theaters were different. All the theaters mm -hmm. yeah. on Broadway now, they don't have the acoustics. They That's are right. all carpeted That's and right. uh, because it's easier to manage the mics on that kind mm -hmm. of, of uh, stage. So even, even if you have a huge voice in a Broadway theater, you wouldn't sound very mm -hmm. big at all. Have you ever f feel worrisome that you have to sing seven or eight shows yes. a week? All the you time. Think, well, you might lose your voice and yes. damage your voice. Absolutely, yeah. yes. I was I was concerned, and I had a lot of people telling me, "Don't do that," you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because this is going to be very dangerous. And I said, "I want to do it." Right. <laughs> I want to take two and, and a half years. You yeah. mu they must have given you breaks. You didn't go two and a half years. I had that. a few breaks because I had already a few co opera contracts, but uh, usually their breaks are two weeks in a, in a, in a year, and uh, in my case, I I I. I Uh, I got a other breaks because of the opera contracts and also also because of the nose, which was uh, the first job at the Metropolitan Opera that I was offered after Peter Gelb seeing me in South Pacific. So um, everything was connected at, at that time, and uh, they gave me this this time to learn the nose, and. Um, and to perform the, the, the shows, but that was a break from South Pacific. Let's talk about the preparation to sing such a daunting role as a debut at the Metropolitan Opera, yeah. as the, what is the character's name, the nose? Kovalev. Yes, uh, Shostakovich. What kind of preparation and how, many, how long did this take? Oh, it took long. It took really long because, you know, um, other Shostakovich that, I, that I've heard and I've studied a little bit were a little simpler than this. I think because the world of, of Kovalev is so so uh, lost and his world, he, he loses everything when he wakes up and doesn't doesn't find he, his nose in his face. He loses his job, his position and everything in his world. And I think the music Shostakovich wrote it to sound like that. So it was horrible to learn. 
because they they there there were no cues in the orchestra. All the rhythms were different. The lines were were completely um, um, naked. So I felt that when I started to learn that, that I never had any musical education in my life. You know, I, th I felt so stupid that I couldn't memorize a line after singing it 20 times, you know. The, the language, the Russian, you had certainly learned Russian or had a good feeling for it, having lived in Poland or not? Yes, they are They are the same family of, of languages, the same roots, right? Slavic languages, languages. but still are, the Russian is very different. I could uh, uh, understand more the grammar and uh, the phrasing of the language by speaking Polish. That helped me a lot. But still, I had to, to work on the Russian. Did you study Russian uh, when you were in Poland? No. 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 It was that time where the Russian language wasn't very well. Um, you know, that's right. Because it was the end of the communism. They didn't like. They they had this pressure of the Russian uh, culture for for many decades, and uh, they didn't really want it to have any more at that time. Where when I arrived in Poland, which was eighty seven, and right after that, uh, so they were in the opposite directions. After two and a half years on Broadway, do you feel that two and a half years uh, give you a chance to? even prepare for the opera or anything? No, it was very hard because I was doing the show, eight shows a week, and I had to learn the nose. And uh, I remember were times that I was very desperate because this music would not come to my head, you know, and, uh, and uh, I really had to work hard for that. But um, did you do it mostly alone? Just since you play the piano? I tried to do it alone, but didn't work at all. And then I had I had someone to help me all the time. But still was very hard, very hard. But it's the time, just the, the the kind of thing that once you learn it, it's there forever. Mm -hmm. And I felt that when I repeated the role uh, this year, and first in Rome, and we did another production of Peter Stein of the Nose in the beginning of, uh, I mean, the last year, 2013. And then at the Metropolitan for the second time, I knew it, I didn't have to study that much. It was already in my brain. But that not always happens you know sometimes you for example I did Cosi Fan Tutte so many times and every time that I have to repeat I don't remember the music and I have to learn it all over I don't know why but um, it was not the case of, of the nose the nose once I, I've learned it I knew it let's hear a clip from the nose but before we hear it tell us what this clip what what's happening at this moment in the opera well this is the moment when Kovalev starts to to look for his nose he he went he goes to the police and he sees the nose entering the church. So he follows the nose in the church and he talks to the nose, listen, <laughs> come back to your place because you're my nose, you know, if I, if I have to tell you. And he says, of course I'm not. I, I am, uh, I am in, right now in a position higher than yours. And he, f he refuses to go back to, to his master's face. That's the moment at the church. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really messy, but it's every note has its place and it has to be <laughs> sung in the right place. What's all the writing on the wall? It's different pieces of paper, you know, from, from a lot of information. And uh, it was very interesting to work with William Cantridge on this production because he's a fantastic plastic artist. And um, I felt many times that, that he was treating us as life uh, sculptures. Mm -hmm. So uh, his language was very specific and the movements and the whole 
uh, set was was splendid. You know, I didn't see much because I was in it, but I had the chance to see afterwards, and it really looked fantastic. How do you feel when um, you do an opera and you do Broadway and with an audience? Do you have a really different feelings, connections wise? Uh, depending of of where you are, you know, I feel that American audiences are very open and uh, willing to to have a good time when they go to the theater. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you, it's in the Broadway or in an opera, they want to participate, right. and that is very uh, clear when you do uh, something like a comedy right. that you need their participation, you need their laughs, you need to know if they are getting it, and uh, I get more. Uh, more uh, connection with the American audiences than, than European audiences. I think uh, the European audiences that have their uh, concept of going to a show or a performance and being quiet and just, just watching and not being able to participate or, or to do any sound, it's just... They're extremely attentive, and then at the end of the exactly. performance, they will. It, they of course slow, not during it, right? You know, but as an artist, sometimes you want to have a reaction right away. Am I going, doing a good job or not? You know, <laughs> That's right. so um, for that sense, American audiences are just fantastic, very warm and, and open. Speaking of having that uh, response from the audience, you are currently singing in Fledermaus yes. at the Met, which is very dependent on uh, the audience. Absolutely, and, um, yes. I think you must feel good about the feedback you're getting from the audience during that, yes? Yeah, we're having fun because audience is having fun. So that's the main thing, you know, we're doing all of that for, for them. And uh, we want to know if, if this is a good uh, performance by hearing the, the feedback. <laughs> And um, and so far we are we're doing great. The audiences are responding very well. The role of Falke, uh, tell us about it in terms of vocally. Is it's as how is it different than other barito so called baritone roles? I think um, all the roles in in the Fledermaus are are not very comfortable in terms of tessitura. You know, I think they 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 sit in a place that is not very vocal. Um, and uh, and I think it's hard for everyone to sing because it's 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 not just not comfortable. I've sang Eisenstein before in my my early career, and I felt the same way that I'm feeling right now in Falke. It's 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 difficult. You have to be on the passaggio all the time, and um, it's not very comfortable. And besides that, there's a lot of dialogues which puts the voice in another position too. So it's it's not an easy role, you know, to 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 do. Of course, uh, it's not a very long role compared to the nose, <laughs> which was the man on stage for for two hours with no breaks. But um, every show is different, and uh, this this is different too, and um, not easier but different. Do you have a preference like modern, classic? I love modern operas. Uh -huh. You know, I love modern contemporary operas Why? because they are so challenging and they are so connected to theater. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, through all the, 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 the centuries and the years, the composers went um, for a, a bigger connection with uh, the story, with the drama. They believed that as better the drama was, the music and the story and the show is going to be better. And that's, I think they are very preoccupied to, right now, the, 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 the contemporary composers to to unite these three, these, these two worlds, the, the 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 theater and the music, and present something that is not musically beautiful, but has a very and deep story to be told. You very recently sang in an opera called A Dog's Heart. Yes, that's a contemporary opera. Tell us about that. It was my debut at La Scala, so I was uh, again very very worried about it <laughs> because it's a contemporary opera Written called by Raskatov. Is a great, is a great composer. I love the piece. It's a very extensive piece, four hundred and fifty pages. Mm -hmm. And my role, I was playing the, the Professor Priobrazhinsky, who is a man on his seventies, a very old man, oh. and um, a crazy scientist who decides to operate uh, a dog and transform him into a human being. So the story is is a very crazy story and uh, the, of course the experience doesn't go well and he has to 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 reverse the whole thing but um, it was a great experience because of it's La Scala the first experience at La Scala and I was very worried because it was a contemporary work 
and we hear so, man, so much about La Scala that right. they are very <laughs> traditional. But what I learned by that experience is that they are very traditional about their music, about Italian music. They don't want you to mess around that, yeah. but they are very open to new things. So mm -hmm. uh, the job, the, the opera was, was a great, had a great acceptance in, in, uh, in La Scala and I was very surprised, happily. Of all the operatic roles you have sung, which one has brought you the more, most joy simply to sing? Um, my favorite role to sing is, is uh, the Count in Le uh -huh. I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I sang Figaro before too, but uh, the, I think the Count, the music of the Count is so rich in, in nuances and expressions and uh, Mozart explored all the moods in, in that in that bro, and I really love doing it. All the duets and the, the aria and the ending, right? Mm -hmm. So every time I get to do it, because for me it's very important to to have the the theater connection in the piece. And I think uh, Mozart and the Ponte were were just fabulous together. And uh, and uh, every time that I got to sing a piece by these two great guys. I'm very honored. When the first show at the Met, how did you feel? Oh, very nervous, of course. I was nervous because of the Met and nervous because um, all my fellow um, friends from Brazil, I was, I was having the great responsibility to be the first Brazilian singer right. to sing at the new Metropolitan Opera House. Mm. Before me, Bidu Sayan, who was a great soprano in the, in the 50s and 40s. Uh, she she was a great diva in, in, in at the Metropolitan, but in the new house, I was the first Brazilian to mm. sing there. So I had that pressure too to do a good job at that at that you know occasion. So, but I was I was confident once I learned the part, the nose, that uh, it was going to be a brilliant role. Uh, I could present only the best part of of my voice and my my uh, humble abilities to act so uh, I, I was very happy for the opportunity what was the headline in brazil <laughs> i i think no i think it's just they they were just so expecting how it's going to be you know to have the first brazilian right. male voice to sing at the metropolitan the most right. famous house in the world right. and uh, it, and it's a dream for every singer of course to sing at the, at the mat so I think they were very supportive all the time. You are the big star there, right? <laughs> I think they, they know me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. More than just I think know they you. Know me. <laughs> I think they know me. Yeah, yeah. Brazil Brazil has been so great for me and now I'm be, I'm able to, to return um, to the young artists and the young singers a little bit of um, confidence in themselves mm -hmm. to sh to show him to show them that that it's possible to go outside the brazil and uh, and uh, why not sing in you've come back to give master classes or teaching not yet or I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been unfortunately too busy right now but uh -huh. yeah. unfortunately yes what role models did you have as say baritone role models when you were first becoming an opera star you know it's it's very funny because once I started to learn some of the singers that are still singing and and then I got the chance to meet them were my 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 great singers you know that I learned so many uh, recordings from them Bryn Terfel right. um, <laughs> Samuel Remy uh -huh. and then and then I got to meet these people for real and it was well, for me it was a very strange at the same time very very happy moment when I got to meet this this great Guys, of course, if you go back, it's Sieppi and, and, and so many great singers, too. Mm -hmm. Do you like to do comedy? I think comedy is very difficult, very, you know. Yes. And uh, you cannot do comedy alone by yourself. Uh, otherwise, you I mean, you can do it if you're a great com comedic you know, actor, which I am not. But I think comedy can work in, um, in if you put the elements together. And uh, if you put a great uh, um, script, great director and uh, actors with you to, to, to be in the same boat as you are. So uh, there's a lot of elements that need to be uh, uh, worked to, in order to work. Comedy is very difficult. And um, 
And as I said, you need the audience to, to be with you. You need that first um, impression to be right. Otherwise, they can reject you right away. Right. So it's very important to have this first connection very strong so they, they accept you <laughs> and they, they will believe what you're doing. Having said that, I mean, deep down, which one you prefer to do, opera, you know, Broadway, or? Um, I think uh, I think I, I love what I'm doing right now with my my career. No, I think I I don't have a I don't prefer one one. I I've I just you know my experience with South Pacific was great, and I really loved doing. But I I am an operatic singer. I I, I grew up as an artist singing opera, and that's my first. I think you know that's where I feel more confident, and I had more experience. But I'm loving to be able to explore all the other things, like 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 I did in South Pacific, and now with uh, the cabaret shows that I'm able to do to sing the songs that I really love. So, whatever I'm doing in the moment, I love it most. Right. Do you do you find uh, being an opera singer um, as a singer? Uh, it's a lonely life. It is because you are lonely most of the time. You have to travel, right? You live two months in one city and then you go to the other city to a new apartment, a new house, and uh, you, you kind of fool yourself by being a citizen of that, that city for two months, you know? But it, it's very lonely, of course it's lonely. And uh, after the show, you know, you go back to your apartment and, uh, and it's, it's hard for some people. I find it very interesting. You know, I always love because Maybe because I, when I left home when I was 18, I really yeah. loved that. I had that spirit of mm -hmm. going and traveling and, and knowing these places. And I'm very excited when I, for, for example, now my next uh, opera job is in Australia. I've never been in Australia oh. before. So I'm very excited to go there and, 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 and to sing. Uh, I'm, I'm singing Onyegin, mm. which is a role that I, I made my European debut in 2004 in Marseille. So I haven't sung that for 10 years, so I'm very excited to see how it's going to sound right now. Right. What other operatic roles are out there beckoning you to sing them? Or which ones do you say, oh, I must sing that? Mm, I don't know. You know, I was so lucky to sing the, all these, these motor roles for so many years. And um, they gave me so much joy. And I, and I, and I think that I, if I could hold to them as long mm -hmm. as is possible, I'll be very happy with them. Mm -hmm. At, you know, your busy life and everything, let's put everything aside. What would you like to do personally for pleasure? What is That's a hard <laughs> question because, you know, we always think about work. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, you have to think about work because once you stop working, everything you've, in your mind goes away. It's, it's very easy to, for example, when you're a young singer, you can sing. Uh, without a routine, you can really you don't really think about technique. You just rely on the nature. After the forties, everything changed. So you have to to really uh, be more strict with your with your training and uh, with your physicality, and uh, and to sing every day as possible. You know, and it's 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 funny. I, and I heard that when I was younger that the older singers would say that you, if you stop singing one day or two days, the third day is going to be in trouble. And that's true, you know, because the muscles, they, right, they, right. they go after, with aging much, much uh, quicker than they, they right. used to, to, you know, to hold everything up. But um, it's, so it's a continuous work. You have to work all the mm -hmm. time to mm -hmm. keep, your, to keep the, the instrument going and... Right. Uh, right. So pleasure. <laughs> pleasure, yes. On a night off where you don't you know, have to I worry about your voice, what would you do to enjoy? I lo you know, I love uh, go to the beach. So oh. whenever I have the opportunity to take to take a vacation, I go or to the Bahamas or to right. a place like that right. where right. I can not not the, the the crowded beaches. No, not at all. I just choose some somewhere very calm that I can can think of nothing. A uh, little island and uh, right, right. and just to to forget about the world for a week or or a little bit more. Yes. But it doesn't happen very yeah. often. <laughs> but on that wonderful thought, um, we have to close our interview. Thank you so much for coming. It's to been us. a pleasure. It's Thank been a great you. pleasure talking to you. Thank you. This has been Classic Talk with Bing and Dennis. We've been today visiting with Paolo Schott.